And this is an example of an artifact. I'm not showing you the overt artifacts in which the ECG runs away from the paper. That's not something that th there's no need to, 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 to talk about it. But in this case, you know, there, there is some, some need. It looks good. It's not terrible, at least. But the amplitude of my R waves increases and then decreases and then increases again. Now, before we link it to a disease, uh, we want to make sure we are aware that uh, if it was a disease causing changes in the amplitude, it would show up with a different pattern. There is a well-known ECG abnormality, which is seen with pericardial effusion, which is called electrical alternance. It shows up on ECG as a tall R wave, a short R wave, a tall R wave, and a short R wave. It's an on every other beat basis. Here, things are different. We have you know, a progressive increase and a progressive decrease. So please do not mistake this artifact with a pathologic finding of electrical alternance, because these changes do not occur on an every other beat basis. right? So this is just a respiratory artifact. The, 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 the electrodes were placed very proximal, so dorsal to the elbow and dorsal to the patella and uh, thereby were very much affected by the excursion of the chest with the respiration. And the ECG would show this, these changes that were really oscillating at the same frequency as the respiratory rate of the cat. And this is an easy, an easy artifact to rule out. And here we have something else that is <clears throat> a little more complicated. So uh, if we see this regular rhythm and then this abnormality here, you know, we might be tempted to say, okay, this is a wide and bizarre uh, QRS complex. We might be tempted to say, I'm, I saw you, you don't agree with that, you're right. But we might be tempted to say. And um, wh um, white and bizarre complexes, I had a student who dubbed them big and weird. So if you want to just memorize them better, you can call them big and weird. However, and this is to emphasize the importance of a multi-lead reading, there's nothing wrong in lead 3. So lead 3 is normal. If this was really an electrical event originating from the ventricles, it would impact the rhythm in lead 3 as well as it impacts the rhythm in lead 1 and lead 2. So if you only had lead 1 and lead 2, you would probably be in trouble naming, labeling this, this event. But we know for sure that it can't be a real event has to be an artifact because lead 3 was completely happy, completely normal. Now, where is it coming from? If we remember the trick with the number of L's, okay, now we can troubleshoot this artifact. It affects lead 1 and lead 2. Is there a clip that is, is there an electrode that is in common between lead 1 and lead 2? It's the right arm electrode. So this is an artifact originating from the right arm. You reposition the right arm or you tell the owner to stop tapping on that electrode because that's something that commonly happens and uh, you can easily get rid of that, that artifact. See another example. This is even more convincing. So if you see this artifact, you would say, wow, that's VTAC. Because that's like VTAC, it's how VTAC looks like. But how comes there is VTAC in lead 2 and lead 3 and there is normal rhythm in lead 1? So we already know that's an artifact, but where is it coming from? We apply the same little trick. What is in common between lead 2 and lead 3 is the left leg. In this case, the tail of the dog, the dog was wagging the tail, was hitting the left leg electrode, and was simulating the attack. And prior to giving him lidocaine, I just grabbed the tail. <laughs> so remember that is important. Think about how much trouble you would have had if you had a single lead ECG. Of course, you don't given lidocaine just because of the run of VTAC. But that's what we see commonly in anesthesia. You know, I see Craig showing me a single channel ECG and you know, sometimes it's challenging to label the abnormality because it's hard to differentiate an, an artifact versus a real cardiac event. So since Craig left the room, I assume I still have some time. And uh, this is just another example. So if you see this premature beat, look how similar to this premature beat is compared to another QRS complex. This looks like a premature contraction, but it's not in lead one. And same, same as the one we saw before, this is another artifact originating from the left leg. And this last artifact, which is not the purring artifact, 
but it's very similar to a Korean artifact. This is a 60 cycles artifact. This is an artifact due to an interference which is originating from the power supply. Sometimes to avoid it, you can plug your ECG machine in a different uh, power supply and uh, or switch off some other devices in the room or in the practice that were generating this, this interference and uh, you can easily avoid it. A purring interference will be very similar to this interference but more irregular. You know, if you blow up these, this ECG, you appreciate that this is very much regular. It, there, there's pretty much nothing in a biological system that can oscillate at that regular with that regularity and uh, thereby the only thing you're left with is a 60 cycle uh, interference and uh, this is my greeting for you and my recommendation to stay curious in our practice there's a lot of cool things to say to see and uh, I'm more than happy to entertain any questions